Hi, I'm Cindy Needham and I'm here at the AQS Quilt Week show here in Lancaster. I've been teaching here all week. I was invited by Bonnie to do a featured teacher exhibit here on my linen whole cloth quilts. So I've been here teaching all week. This is the last day. I finally got a chance to come down to the exhibit and spend some time with everybody. So I immediately broke the rules. I took down the chain guards and I'm letting people touch the quilts and I am having a blast. So basically I'm featuring my linen whole cloth quilts. If you don't know what those are, I've been taking vintage antique textiles, tablecloths, dresser scarves. I layer them with another fabric and then basically I quilt the snot out of them and I turn them into heirloom whole cloth linen quilts. I've been traveling around the world teaching doing trunk shows, guild shows, and the cool part about my quilts is that I let everybody at my different shows touch them, enjoy them, fondle them, and every single one of them has a story to tell. Okay, this particular quilt I've named Celebrate Me Home, and I, this was gifted to me by a friend. We found it in an antique store in Colorado a few years ago. The bad part about this one is that the whole top left hand corner was shredded. It almost looked like somebody had done this to it. The piece has such beautiful embroidery on it, I decided to do the go the extra mile and try to save it. So I took some hanky fabric, which was very thin, I layered it underneath the fabric and then quilted it to death. And actually you can't even really see the damage that was done, so I was able to save it. I picked a design using the intertwining hearts for the middle. I was working on this piece when we finally got our new home. We've been through a lot in the past eight years with living in multiple places, not really having a permanent home. We finally found our forever home, so I named this one Celebrate Me Home, and the four hearts represent our family. So that one kind of made it special. Okay, this one I named Everlasting. This one started out as a cutwork tablecloth. It was actually twice the size that it is now. I don't know if you've ever had those quilts that give you nothing but fits. The embroidery on this wasn't very well done. And the more quilting I did on it, it got tweaked, it got twisted, it got buckled. So one night I was fed up with it, I was tired of it. I laid it on my cutting table and I cut off about 18 inches of it all the way around and got rid of the problem. I got up the next morning and went, oh, did I really just do that? <laughs> but I saved the middle that still looked pretty good. The middle also didn't come out very well. I quilted one design and it was tragic. It looked horrible, so I had to cover it up. I put a hanky on point to cover up the mess I made and I made a mess of that too. So then I put a crochet doily on top of that. We put a piece of tatting on top of that and then a rose in the middle and now you can't see all the mess that I made from underneath it. At the time that I was creating this, we lost uh, Kent's mother and Kent's father. They had been married for over 60 years. So I have dedicated this to them. I've named it Everlasting. And the beautiful part about this is the angel lace work that I put on the hanging sleeve on the back. And then I have a doily on the back that's dedicating it to both Joan and Harold. But I have a thing for angels. This is the most beautiful piece of lace for the angels I've ever seen. So it was fabulous to have this on the back. I love to duty up the backs and put beautiful lace mementos, quotations. And so this is a real special place that hangs in the entryway of our home. Okay, this piece I've named Cinderella. When I was asked to teach in Dubai the first time, a friend gave me a hundred dollar bill and said, you need to go shopping and buy yourself something really special. Well, they don't have souvenirs in Dubai. I came home with my hundred dollar bill and I was not gonna spend it on my power bill. I went shopping on eBay. So there's this beautiful linen for sale on eBay for a hundred dollars. I was the winning bidder. The problem is that it was beautiful, pristine, and white in the photo, and when I received her, she was chocolate brown, falling apart, full of holes, bad seller. So I 
I knew that I had something really special because the white work embroidery, the lace was incredible. So I had to fuse her together to keep all the fabric from falling off. I put it on an underlayment, an additional piece of fabric. I had to rip off the border because it was shredded. I added crocheted lace to hide the ragged border. And I spent a full year using kimono silk quilting around all of the embroidery trying to recreate fabric out of thread. The thing that was really interesting about this is somebody else had tried to save her many years ago because there's thousands of little hand darning stitches trying to keep all of the fabric together. So I named her Cinderella because I felt that I rescued her from the ashes and made a princess out of her. The following year I was asked to teach and speak in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and I was invited to do a private trunk show for the princess. She was a granddaughter of the leader of Abu Dhabi. And so when I told her story I said that Cinderella is now at a real palace meeting a real princess. It was a wonderful end to her story. I had to search around for a while and I found lace beautiful lace for the back that complements the lace that's on the front. This is a good way to display lace if you've got parts and pieces. Duty up the back of your quilt. And then I found another piece of the same type of lace and I've named her Cinderella. So this is one of my favorite pieces, but it's also a way to take something that's very badly damaged almost destroyed and give her a new life for everybody else to enjoy. Okay, this quilt is probably one of the most special ones that I'll ever make. This is the Nun's Quilt. Uh, some of you may have seen the footage that was filmed in Paducah, I think it was about three years or so ago, and she won a third place ribbon in Paducah, and I told a little bit of her story then. This, the linen itself was made by a French nun in a convent in France during World War II. I purchased this off of eBay for about $75 back in 2010. I tell a lot of my students that these linens, some of the linens come with a very special soul or an energy to them and I felt that from the very first time that I received her. I've always felt that I needed to quilt it and return it to France to a convent as a gift, uh, dedicating it to the nuns and the Jewish children that they were trying to save. I've been told by about five or six different, I call them spiritual quilters, that you are the keeper. The last person to tell me this said, you may not give this quilt away. You need to keep this. And I said, well, I've been meaning all along that I need to gift this back to France. I said, what am I going to do? And my little inside voice said, well, you need to make another one. So I decided, the crazy part of me decided, that I was going to duplicate the nun's quilt. And I'm calling this one Sister Act. I spent about six weeks tracing the nun's quilt on clear vinyl, and I spent about that much longer tracing the whole design onto this linen yardage. I've been quilting on this for about a year now using different silks and I'm not done with it. I think this is the first unfinished quilt that has ever hung at an AQS quilt show. But that's pretty good. That means that I was the first. I thought it was important to be able to show my guests at the exhibit the process and what this is doing. I'm making this in blind faith. I don't know where it's going to go or which convent is going to receive it, but I know that I have to make it. I do quilting retreats at the Mercy Center in Auburn, California, and this is a retreat center for the nuns. So I thought, well, okay. I asked, I had a little meeting with some of the nuns there. I told them the complete story of the nuns quilt. And I said, I would like to have this quilt blessed. I want your blessings on it when it decides to go back to France. So each of them provided a scripture for me. And I've machine quilted their scriptures on all four sides of the quilt. But I needed something to dedicate this to the children. And I have scripture dedicating it to the children that's going around the whole circle of the quilt. 
I'm a little frustrated because I don't know where it's going yet, but like all things, when it's time, you'll be told. And so when I'm told where this needs to go, then I'll be taking this back to France and being dedicating this to a convent there where she'll find her home. If you want the complete story of the nun's quilt, because it's ever growing, it's tragic, it's happy, there's a lot of spiritual energy with this, email me. You can just contact me off of my website, cindyneedham.com, and ask for the nun's quilt story, and it's a fabulous story to share. All right, thank you for watching, and I also want to thank Bonnie Browning for inviting me to do this fabulous exhibit for the show, and I look forward to seeing you at a different show. Thank you.